بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ دی سبجیکٹ آف مائی بریف ٹاک ٹو ڈیز اباؤٹ دی سائٹنگ آف دا نیو مون سائٹنگ آف دا نیو مون از آلویز اے ویری انجوائبل اینڈ پلیزنٹ ایکسپیرینس فار آل پیپل وین ایور دا نیو مون از سائٹڈ دیر از اے ویری پلیزنٹ ایٹماسفیئر ایوری ویئر elders, youngsters, children, everybody, they look towards skies and they spot the new moon and they see it with great joy and also point out with their fingers to other people that look, there is a moon and everybody is so happy. This is really something very important because in Islam, the new month begins with the sighting of the new moon. And in Islamic calendar, which is based on the sighting of the new moon, there are 12 months. So therefore, in one year, all Muslims have this enjoyable experience that uh, they can see and spot and see the new moon for 12 times in a year. And this is so important an occasion in the life of a Muslim that the Holy Prophet وسلم, has taught us the prayer that whenever we see the new crescent on the horizon, that is the sighting of the new moon, then all Muslims, they should pray to Allah Almighty in the following wording, Allahumma ahillahu alayna bil amne wal imane wa salamate wal islami rabbi wa rabbuk Allah hilalu rushdin wa khair. This is a very blessed prayer and all Muslims, they should remember it and always recite it whenever they see the new moon. If we go for the meaning of this prayer, I can go word for word and tell you that it means Allahumma ahillahu alayna bil amne wal imane that O oh Allah, you bring upon us this new moon with faith and with peace. Was salamate wal islami and complete harmony and peace and tranquility should also come with that. Rabbi wa Rabbuk Allah, my Lord and the Lord of the moon is Allah alone. Hilalu rushdin wa khair and may Allah make it a new month of uh, virtue and uh, guidance. So this is a quick translation of this, uh, point, uh, this uh, prayer which everybody has to say at the time of the sighting of the new moon. Now, as I mentioned, sighting of the new moon should be a very enjoyable experience. But unfortunately, when it comes to the month of Ramadan, in the Muslim world, there is always one element of unpleasantness. And that is the dispute whether the moon has been sighted or not. Whenever the month of uh, Ramadan comes near, in the newspapers we always read, there are statements by various uh, ulama, various imams of the various mosques, they always come out with this determination that, well, whatever happened in the past, that is there. But this time, definitely, we are going to start the month of Ramadan on one day and celebrate the Eid at the end of that on one day. These are the good promises which they always make. But what happens at the end of the day, that there is always a difference and dispute on the question of the sighting of the new moon. Half of the Muslims, they say, today we have sighted the moon. They begin the month of Ramadan on that day. And the other half, they say, no, it has not been sighted. We are going to start it on the other day. There's always a dispute. And this is very strange and very unfortunate that in spite of their all the claims and their promises at the end of the day, there is always a dispute. But we must be very thankful to Allah Almighty that by His grace and mercy, <clears throat> in the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat, there has never been any dispute. All Ahmadi Muslims in one country, they always begin the month of Ramadan on one day and celebrate the Eid on one day. There has never been any difference at all. It may be that the Ahmadi Muslims living in a different part of the world where the horizon is different. They are starting the month of Ramadan different than the other Ahmadi Muslims 
living in another part of the world. That is but natural because this point should be understood very clearly that it is not essential at all, nowhere in the teachings of Islam, that all Muslims all over the world, they must start Ramadan on one day and have the celebration of Eid on one day. It could differ and it may differ and actually differs because the horizon is different, the timing of the sighting of moon could, is different. So it is quite possible, scientifically speaking, that in one part of the world the moon is sighted while the people living in other part of the world, they would not be able to sight it on that day, they would be able to see it the next day. So in that case, there could be a difference between the people living in different parts of the world and that happens among the Ahmadi Muslim living in various parts of the world. But it does not happen that the Ahmadi Muslims living in one country, they start the celebration of the beginning of fast, the month of Ramadan on two different days and have the celebration in two different days. So that unity by the grace of Allah is a great blessing for all Ahmadis and we are extremely thankful for that to Allah Almighty. Now coming back to the question of the sighting of the moon, we should remember there are certain guidelines given in the teachings of Islam. Let's first talk about what the Holy Quran says about that. The Holy Quran says, I just read out one part of the verse, Allah Almighty says, فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرَ فَلْيَسُمْهُ That whosoever is there to witness the arrival of the month of Ramadan, they should observe the fasting during that month. So it means those who are present, those who are healthy, those who are not on journey as the two exceptions are mentioned in the Holy Quran and they are able to witness and see the arrival of the month of Ramadan, they should see, they should observe the fast. Now if we go to Hadith, there the Holy Prophet wasallam has made it very clear that the month should always begin with the sighting of the moon and it should also end with the sighting of the moon. The wording of the Hadith which is so well known and everybody agrees on that is Sumu Leroyatehi Vafteru Leroyatehi that you always start keeping the fast and begin the month of Ramadan by the sighting of the moon and also finish this practice of fasting when you see the new moon, the moon of Shawal. So that come, brings us to the point that the sighting is essential, that is to see that if possible people should be able to see it, nothing better than that. If they can see and observe the new crescent with their naked eye, nothing better than that. That is the real thing to be done. But one can imagine that in all different situations this may not be possible. There are so many factors related with human beings are involved there human factors are there. For example, on that day it could be cloudy, the horizon may not be very bright, very clear and the person may not be standing at the right position and that person may not be looking into the right direction and angle. He might be trying to see the new crescent somewhere else in the skies and the moon could be somewhere else. So that factor is also there. Because of dust sometime it is not possible to see the very thin line of the new crescent if it's really very, very small. So, so many human factors are there and apart from that one can see that there could be somebody who is very good in his sight and there could be another one who is very weak. So, depending on all these human factors, there is always an element of doubt regarding the actual direct sighting of the moon and that is why what happens that sometime it uh, has, uh, people have experienced this thing that whenever on the sky there is the new moon, some people are so happy and jubilant and saying, well, we have spotted the new moon. While in the same crowd there could be somebody else who would say, sorry, still I can't see that. So this human factor must not be ignored. And if sighting so clearly and directly is not possible, then Islam teaches us that we should benefit from the scientific information and go along with that. Now here at this point some people question that why don't you always stick to the actual sighting of the moon? If we take that criteria so strictly 
that in many countries like here in Britain, sometime the new moon is seen after one week because almost every day it is cloudy, overcast and people are not able to see that. So does it mean that they should not start the fasting until uh, the new moon is actually been sighted? Again, the one saying of the Holy Prophet وسلم, comes for our guidance, which makes it very clear that if the days are completed to be 30, then the lunar month cannot be more than 30 days. So if the 30 days are completed of the last month, then must be, you should believe that the new month has started. That is one answer. The other is that as normally we do in our daily life, we always make use of the scientific information for so many things. Just to give you one example, every day in the morning, whenever we observe the Fajr prayer, is it the practice of all Muslims that they wait until the time when they see really the sun coming up? Not at all. They always go by the information provided on the television, in the radio or in the newspapers about the sunrise timing. And just approximately one hour or so before the sunrise, they say this is the time for the Fajr prayer. When do they observe the Zohar prayer? That is when the, uh, the sun starts declining after that, after the Zawal. And how do they determine that on the basis of again the scientific information? And when do they observe the Maghrib prayer? Again, on the same principle that as soon as the moon is, as the sun is set, they say this is the time for the Maghrib prayer. So the principle we should follow is that if the scientific information is there for our help and guidance, then we should make use of that. And in so many ways, we always actually make full use of that information. So why not in the case of Ramazan? So this is the principle on which if we now turn to the scientific information and consult those people who are knowledgeable in this field, like the people or the authorities of the Royal Observatory here in the United Kingdom or the same sort of organizations in other countries, then all these organizations always provide us with specific and precise information about the sighting of the moon. But as I mentioned earlier, there is a human factor there. So therefore, this information does not categorically say that on that particular day, you will definitely see that. But with all the standards of probability, they predict that the sighting is quite possible if certain conditions are fulfilled. Now we come to this point. What is the opinion of those knowledgeable people? If clearly, physically, it is not possible to sight the moon, which is the case in most of the cases, then we have to depend on the scientific information in, uh, in pursuance of Islamic teachings. Now, if it comes to those criterion, which uh, these knowledgeable people have presented, and uh, precisely speaking, I can say that when we contacted the Royal Observatory authorities here in the United Kingdom, uh, we have got this information uh, printed and available with us in written form, black and white, which says that the sighting of the moon is basically something very difficult to determine in very precise and accurate ways. But there are certain principles which can be followed. Here I would like to clarify one thing. Generally what we see that so many people who are not fully well versed in these matters, they say that if the a sunset is there and the moon set is after that and there is a gap of say a few minutes or 15 minutes or half an hour or so, then when this moon set is after the sunset, so it means that that moon should be counted as seen. That is not actually the standard given by the reliable authorities. The criteria given by them is different and there are two basic things which they always say that uh, we have to understand first of all what is the phenomena of the sighting of the moon. The moon, whenever it uh, uh, starts the new moon, scientifically speaking, it is called the scientific birth of the moon. And at that stage, if we can say that the existence or the appearance or slightly the visibility of that moon begins but actually it is not able to be sighted with naked eye. The sighting is not possible at that point which is called 
the scientific birth of the moon. It requires longer time later on and that is uh, to be measured in the term of the age of the moon. From that zero point the age of the moon is to be calculated and it goes along with that. The authorities they say that if the new moon is at least 20 hours, the age of the moon is 20 hours, then there is possibility of its being seen. Less than that, it can't be seen. And it is not based only on their experience, but I can tell you that we in Ahmadiyya community in United Kingdom, we actually had several occasions to check this uh, criterion mentioned by the authorities that if the age of the moon is less than 20 hours, can it be seen or not? Once I remember that the age of the moon was 17 hours, even 18 hours, even 19 hours, but nowhere in the United Kingdom we were able to see and spot the moon on that night. So it means that this criterion mentioned by the Royal Observatory seems to be very, very close to accurate, if not exactly accurate. So roughly speaking, we can say that if the age of the moon scientifically speaking, is more than 20 hours, there is a possibility, likelihood of that new crescent to be sighted by the naked eye. But this is only one criterion. There is another one and that is called the elongation. It's a degree which is uh, to be described in the scientific wording of the angular separation of the sun from the moon the angle between the sun and the moon at the time of their setting down that is called the angular separation and in one word it is described as the elongation and it is measured in number of degrees. Now the reliable authorities of the Royal Observatory they have uh, you know they have maintained that if the elongation is more than 10 degrees in that case that new moon can be sighted. If it is less than that, it is not possible to see that. Of course, with that uh, element of doubt always remains there a little bit of that, but if both the conditions in some cases are fulfilled, then there is more chances to say that well, in that case, it is possible to see the new crescent on that day. But if both the conditions are not there, then there is hardly any chance of saying that the moon can be sighted and it cannot be taken as a moon sighted. There could be a case where one criterion is fulfilled and one value is satisfied, but the other value is not satisfied. In that case, it will become a bit doubtful thing to decide exactly what is the situation. In that case, actual sighting should be tried and if that is there, that will clear the whole case. Otherwise, it will be a doubtful thing and the scientists, they say that in that case, it cannot be precisely determined or predicted that the new moon is worthy to be sighted on that night. So these are the two criterions and for many, many years in United Kingdom, by the grace of Allah, the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat has been following this uh, scientific information and on the basis of the most reliable information which is available here in United Kingdom and all over the world, on the basis of the same criteria every year this decision is taken and it is uh, well calculated, very minutely discussed and uh, seen and after that a precise decision is taken and according to that it is announced. And all Ahmadi Muslims in the United Kingdom, they always follow that one decision which is taken from the center. And by the grace of Allah on that point, it is not at all difficult for them to uh, observe that unity which is the outstanding feature of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat. Now here is one question which has to be discussed, that what about those neighboring countries? Do they also have to follow the same decision or not? Or can their decision be different? I have already mentioned briefly that in one horizon, the sighting of the moon should be one. But if the horizon is different and uh, so much distance is there where the values altogether change, for example, if the age of the moon here is say 18 hours and in America it would be 23 hours, in that case certainly it will go beyond the 20 hours mark and the values would differ. So in that different horizon, the decision could also be different and there is nothing against that. Here I would like to 
uh, mention one thing which uh, is uh, very clearly mentioned in the book Tirmazi Sharif, which is one of the uh, six authentic books of Ahadith. And that gives uh, further explanation of this point, whether people all over the world should celebrate the sighting of the moon on one day or not. It is mentioned in that Hadith that uh, one uh, companion of the Holy Prophet وسلم, he went on his business to Syria. And when he accomplished his uh, job and he was about to come, that was the day when in Syria he was able to see the new moon that was the moon of Ramadan. The new uh, crescent was there. So he saw the advent of Ramadan in Syria with his own eyes. And later on when he came back to Medina and uh, when he saw the moon, that was the night of Friday. When he came back to Medina, then he discussed with other people that when did you start the Ramadan? And they asked him that when did you see the moon there? He said, I have seen with my own eyes the new moon on the evening of Friday. And the people in Medina told him that, well, we saw the new moon on the evening of Saturday. And then this person, this companion who came from Syria, he said that, don't you think that it is good enough for you to depend and rely on the information coming from Syria. Don't you think it uh, quite enough for that? Then Hadrat Ibn Abbas told him that no, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu has made this point clear for us. That is to say that the sighting of the new moon in one part of the world would not be applicable in the same way to the people living in other part of the world. For every area, for every horizon, they have to depend on their own independent sighting of the new moon. That is why Hadrat Imam Tirmazi, he has uh, put the title of his that chapter, Le Kulle Ahle Baladin Royatuhum. For the people of each horizon, they have to depend on their own sighting. So in that case, I would say, coming back to the previous question, that if in United Kingdom uh, and the European countries, if the horizon, more or less the values are the same, not very much different. So in that case, in the whole area, one sighting would be taken and one decision will be based on that one. But if in the Western Hemisphere, if different horizon is there, their values would differ, their decision can also be different. Similarly, in the Far East or in the Middle East or in Asian countries, if the values are different, their horizon is different. So depending on the, those facts and figures and the actual values, they have to take their own independent decisions. And if those decisions are different, then it does not go against the teachings of Islam. So everything by the grace of Allah we can say, scientifically speaking, based on the religious knowledge of the Holy Quran and the Hadith and the logic as well, everything is so clear and there should not be any doubt or any confusion or difference on this issue. And by the grace of Allah we have to say once again that in the Ahmadiyya community the understanding on this matter is so clear and the decisions are taken with full wisdom and by the grace of Allah they are blessed by Allah. So finally, I would like to say that may Allah bless for all Muslims the advent of the new month of uh, Ramadan, a very holy month, which is actually the spring season of spirituality. May Allah bless the advent of this new holy month of Ramadan for all of us. Ameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.